Hello, friend. I am Pastor Robert Axton, and today I invite you to keep watching for the next 14 minutes as we explore God's Word together. Have you ever desired or wondered that you could have a radical changing experience in your life? Well, today we're going to talk again about Jacob and how that he did have a life-changing experience that came to him, and it totally set him on a different path. Jacob, Jacob in Genesis chapter 32, we find that when he left his home and he was uh, left in fear for his life, and he was sent by his parents to go to his uncle Laban. This young man the Bible says, uh, went there and he lives uh, for uh, 20 years. And, and when he is returning back to his, his parents' home, uh, it's in that route in return that he has an encounter that totally transformed him. I want to read in Genesis chapter 32, I'm going to begin with verse 24, and I'm going to read just a few verses here, at least through verse 28. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, this is the angel speaking. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And then Jacob says, and he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now, before I read further, let me just tell you, this is the attitude of change. This is the, this is the attitude, the mindset that one must have to be able to say that uh, I'm going to uh, be changed by God. God's going to touch me and help me. And so we approach with an attitude that says, I'm not giving up. I've seen people. I have seen people, uh, they'll come and pray and sort of like, I'm going to give the Lord one chance and, and uh, I, I, I'm not going to come back. But if you are determined that this is what you need and this is what you want, I tell you, there's nothing will stop you. Jacob said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Somewhere along the way through the night, he realized my blessing is with this encounter. And so verse 27 says, And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Now, when he said this, of course, Jacob, the name, the Old Testament names of the, uh, in, in the olden times, uh, often names was revelatory of the person themselves. And even the Lord used his name to reveal his attributes. He said, my name is Jacob. Jacob meant supplanter, deceiver. That's exactly what he was. He said, that's who I am. It was confession time. <clears throat> and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. He is a changed man. He is now Israel a man that has proven he's a prince that has power with God and with men. The Bible lets us know what happens with Jacob. Jacob uh, goes on and he marries uh, uh, and becomes a, a family man. And he has 12 sons. And these 12 sons are Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Joseph, and Benjamin. Now, if you're a biblical student of some sort, you may recognize. Remember Jacob, 
His name has changed to Israel. And now we have these 12 sons. These become the 12 tribes of Israel. This was the beginning of them. Now, this is where it becomes interesting as we look into the life of Jacob, who has become Israel. We look into his family. We look into these 12 sons, and we, we find that Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali. I'm going to stop there. These, these are his oldest sons. These, these were born to the, the deceiver, if you would. The, these are born to the, the man that had not had a life encounter in change with God. And they reflect somehow their dad. They, they reflect what he is. You know, somebody said... Uh, you don't reproduce what you say, you reproduce what you are. And, and that's why it's so very important, the Bible says, to know those that labor among you. That's why it's so very important that ministers of the gospel should try to live uh, uh, according to the scripture. And you can't just live one way and go and preach and teach and say what you want as long as you say the word and I can go live my own life. But here, uh, Jacob uh, is Jacob, but he's the deceiver. And, and what does he do? He produces some, some boys that are, uh, for the most part, like the old man Jacob. And we're going to find that out as we continue our, our study into this, this family but we find that the 11th son was Joseph. Now, to put this into perspective, Jacob is wanting to return back home. It's been 20 years. And uh, he has, uh, he has a, a young boy by the name of Joseph that uh, uh, is, is just born into the world, if you would. And he's, he's a young child and, and he loves him. He's, he's born to, uh, Rachel, his wife and, and, uh, Rachel, uh, Leah had all kinds of children. It seemed like, and Rachel was barren and she wanted a child so much. And God gave her Joseph. Joseph is loved by his father and uh, he's the one that he gave the coat uh, of many colors to. But I I'm getting ahead of myself here. I want to go on this journey as he returns back. He returns back home. And so as he returns back home, that's when this encounter with God takes place. This encounter with God that is a life-changing experience for him, and he becomes Israel. He becomes a new man. What you find is also the children late in his life, after his life-changing experience, also are different. They're different. That's right. Joseph is very loving, not only by his father to him, but to his father, and there's this close connection there. And what I see is, is uh, uh, Jacob has changed. He's become Israel. He, uh, and Joseph is not raised, if you would, by the same father that his older brothers are raised with. Oh, yes, he's the same man. He's got the same fingerprints. It's the same voice. It, it's the same body. But there's something has happened to him and he has been changed. And I tell you that when someone, anyone, has an encounter with God, their life can be changed. No matter what your past has been, no matter how bad you may have turned out in previous years in your life up to now, when you come to God, there can be a experience, an experience that will transform you and it will shape the rest of your life. You are a new man. You're not the same one. It's interesting as you read the scripture in the book of Genesis, you find after 
Jacob's encounter where he gets this name change, this life change, this, this change in his, in his uh, very uh, soul. Uh, when he gets this change, uh, the scripture shows that sometimes he's called Jacob, sometimes he's called Israel. You know, uh, when he goes back home, he's called Jacob. Well, that's the way they knew him. I, I heard a, a, a preacher one time, he was kind of uh, complaining uh, because that when he went back to where he was raised, they were not calling him with the respectful due of pastor. They, they called him by his first name. They just remembered him like the boy that grew up. And his wise mother said, you better be grateful that there's somebody that knows you the way you were, that knows you as you were. Respect that. They love you. They, they, they just haven't been around the new man that much, but that don't mean they don't love you. Respect that. There's times when you may go around somebody that the only person they remember is who you used to be, and they may call you by that, that name. If you, they may call you by Jacob, but it doesn't mean that you have not had an encounter with God. In due time, they will see for themselves. They will see for themselves. God will... Let them see the new man in you, the new person that you have become. Be patient. God will let it happen in due time. As we continue our study in next week's lesson, as we uh, continue talking about this, we're going to focus further upon this young boy, Joseph and what God does in his life. And, and we're going to look at the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel. We're going to look at him and all of them together. And what happens, I tell you, you're going to want to come back because we have some tremendous things that I believe that God will bless you for and help you to learn through this. I'm excited about it. This is one of my favorite uh, stories of the scripture. Uh, when we talk about Joseph, and I pray that it's as much a blessing to you in some way. Friend, uh, I am Pastor Robert Axton, and uh, you can reach out to me by email or by Facebook, and I would love to visit with you more about the Scripture. We can arrange for personal Bible studies even, and no matter where you are in the world, because of... Uh, uh, the ability by Zoom, we can have a, a Bible study to your group or to you personally. But uh, you can reach out to me. I would love to share more with you. I want you to be blessed. Amen. I love the Word of God, and I know you do too. And it's with reason. God arranged it that you would be here today to hear this lesson. Praise God. I want to pray before we go. And let's just remember that God is for us and he wants to help us. And let's pray together now. Jesus, we come to you. We know that all things are possible with you. And I pray for everyone that is listening, whoever it may be, that you'll put a desire in their heart to know you and to follow you. And I pray that they would come to know you with a great life-changing experience that you have for them. Thank you. And we ask in the name above all names, Jesus, we pray, amen.